You're listening to Paris Search Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Paris Search UK Radio. Paris Search Radio, broadcasting to the UK and beyond. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. My friends are giving me the update that they're tuning in. You're listening to The Spectral Zone with host Kaz Rooney. Good evening everyone and welcome to the Spectral Zone on Parasearch Radio. As always, I am your host, I am Kaz Rooney and tonight I'm being joined by Mr Edward Leonetti, all the way from Montana. Hello Edward. Hello Kaz, how are you tonight? I am great, how are you? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So what are we getting into tonight? <laughs> that is not a Montana accent though, is it? No, it's not at all. I'm a world traveler, but I'm a New yeah. Yorker. A New Yorker. Uh, what do we want to talk about tonight? So, you are actually a photographer. I am actually a professional photographer. I do architectural photography, so I go to a lot of haunted, quote, uh, historical places and photograph them, travel around the U.S. and different parts of the world, and I also do landscapes. Wow. Now, that interests me, doing architectural photography, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because I find, well, I find really old, gothic style buildings fascinating. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the the architecture is is unlike anything you can really find anymore. They don't really have that kind of uh, quality in them, personality, so to speak. Yeah. Do you have a favorite kind of place you like to go and photograph, though? Um, some of the places that I, that have always appealed to me are cemeteries because there's always that um, artistic quality to the headstones and how we remember our, our dearly departed and things. So I yeah. do like to go into those places. Um, any place with a lot of history. We actually have um, a graveyard near me. Um, mm-hmm. And it's actually, they've got a new side and they've got an old side. But in the old side, it's all very, very, very old. Headstones mm-hmm. are all very gothic and very, very dark. Um, mm-hmm. I don't actually like that bit of the graveyard, to be honest. Um, but you're also quite into the paranormal. I am pretty well into the paranormal. Um, I've done that for years. Um, really even before it caught on as kind of, you only heard about very few people who were doing it. And of course they were considered quacks back in the day, Mm. you know, or or fanatics. And, uh, you would hear about these different people going into places and acting, (laughs) acting up as I would (laughs) say. And, and, uh, they had all these weird little gadgets that they took with them and they claimed to be and it and it just appealed to me that whole, you know, the whole circumstances of it, the history of it, I liked more than anything else. Now, let's go back a little bit. Let's go back to mm-hmm. when did you very, did you have an experience which has uh, initially yes, brought you into the paranormal? Uh, yes, I did. Um, when I was two years old, we moved into this house. Um, that was an old Victorian house, had a lot of history in, in the East coast of the United States. And, uh, the first night that we were there, um, of course, every noise in the house, my mom was waking up and stuff and we were just little kiddos. So, 
uh, she was checking on us and she heard me upstairs in a man's voice as well and wow. responding to me. So uh, she had come up there and as she came up there, she describes a man walking through the wall. And of course she grabs me up because this is very disturbing to her and asked me if I was okay and everything. And I mm. very nonchalantly and very comfortably told her yeah. it's okay, mom, that's, J that's Johnny. And, um, so that was really what got me into it. And of course, um, years later, um, uh, being able to look up in the archives of people who died in the area and where they lived and things like that, public records, I was able yeah. to find out that a man named John Whitman had lived and died in that house. So, wow. Yeah, we kind of verified. So did that always stay with you then, that interest? It did um, over the years. I have a really um, level-headed way of going through things. I don't really get into a lot of that emotionalism that you, that you see really commonly. Um, yeah. I'm more of the very quiet, very level-headed, very trying to figure things out. And, and, of course, I would love to have more evidence of paranormal, and I have had, but it came in different forms than I think that are normally perceived as being paranormal, if you follow. Yeah, I can follow that. So give me an example of that. Give me something, a way that's came to you in a different way. Okay, well... Something that's really hard for somebody to do is remove themselves from what they've heard about something. Yeah. So rather than having a preconceived notion and hearing about things that have happened in there, I try to do that as little as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as paranormal happenings going on there. Mm -hmm. So if I go to a place, a historical place, to do uh, shoots, and uh, to see what's going on there as far as on a spiritual activity level... Um, I don't really listen to a lot of paranormal sightings from people, their experiences. Yeah, because um, that comes more... out to personal belief, isn't it? That's a personal experience it... and a personal belief. Right, it is. And being that everyone is different, they can't expect the same kind of experience with the supernatural as the person before them. So I try not to taint my own emotions and, and my own thoughts with somebody else's experience there so I, I base it more on the actual hard facts history of places well i mean <clears throat> you live in a place now we're completely fascinated with the usa we are mm. completely <laughs> fascinated with the usa <laughs> we have actually come up with this really good idea edwards right which, which is a paranormal house swap which is all, house yeah, so all you guys in the USA can come and stay in our houses, we'll go and stay in your houses, and then you can explore the places you want to here, and we'll explore the places we want to there. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That would be awesome. I would That'd be up be good, for something it? like that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I would be up for something like that. That's brilliant, huh? <laughs> now, I just want to stop a little minute. Have you actually, does your family actually have a kind of belief in the paranormal? Or is that um, personal to you? Um, no, that's, that's perfectly fine to ask that. Um, I come from a background uh, that it does center around some quite a bit of paranormal spiritual beliefs so like that. Again, I don't really go too in-depth into those things, but in a yeah. general way, I can, I can tell you um, that, yes, definitely, it was always open to those things and open to talk about those things, and it was also encouraged to be very realistic about those things. Mm. So you mm. kind of grew up with, so let's say you kind of had this, you were aware of it, but you knew to look at different logical explanations. Would that be fair? Well, yes, to look at both sides of it rather than just saying this is 100% yeah. this based on my own emotions and what I want it to be, to actually mm -hmm. look at the facts 
Um, and so in that way, I guess I've, I've been able to see both sides of things, how my imagination is taken over and created situations yeah. and how other times there's absolutely no explanation, logical explanation for what had occurred. Have you ever, I mean, as a photographer, you've traveled everywhere, mm. haven't you, really? Yes, I have. I've been all over the world, yeah. Wow, you lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, do you fortunate. have do you have a favorite place? Um of course not to uh <laughs> not to fluff your pillow, but uh I've always really liked the UK. Uh mm -hmm. I didn't get to spend as much time there as I would like to have. I stayed there for about two and a half years. Yeah. But uh I would like to have stayed longer because there were so many things that I wanted to explore more and I didn't get that opportunity Yeah. because at that time, at that time uh, my travel was based on what my ex-wife wanted as well. And she yeah. was incidentally from, from Romania. So I, mm -hmm. I did spend almost six years there in Romania, uh, which of course is, is surrounded wow. by very big paranormal history. Lots of mystery there. Did you go to Vlad the Impaler's castle? Did you go to Vlad's castle? Well, the funny thing is, and I'd like to share this because there's a very big misconception that Bran Castle, which the orn turrets that everybody perceives as, as uh, Vlad the Impaler's yeah. castle, Prince Vlad, uh, uh, his castle, uh, is actually not his castle. He did own it, but he never actually stayed there. Um the castle that he stayed in is actually in ruins on top of a hill and yeah. it's called and it's called Poenare P O E N A R I so if people want to look that up and go ahead and see that was the actual castle that he lived in Oh wow Oh we have a couple of questions in the chat room for you Okay So Kelly is asking are there any locations in the UK that you would love to photograph and why um, yes, thank you, Kelly, for that question. Yes, there are more. Um, unfortunately, when I stayed at Chillingham Castle, because I stayed there for two days years back, um, I didn't actually get to take as many photographs as I would like to have. So the only thing that I really have is one old picture, and it just really isn't even, it's nothing exciting. And uh, wanting to explore Highmore as well, do a little bit more of that. And I don't remember the name of the street, but it's one of those sub-level streets where the poor used to live. You know, things like that I wanted to explore more, and I really didn't get a whole lot of chance to do that because at that time I was still modeling, so my time was mostly devoted to doing that. Um, the other question we have is from Ness, and she's asking, mm -hmm. um, has there ever been a place that scares you to the point that you refuse to go back? Um, thank you, Ness, for that question. Um, no, there isn't any place that scared me that much because when it boils down to it, all I see is a building with history. Right, that brings me on to a question then. Um, okay, there may not be a, a place that scares you, Edward, that you wouldn't go back, but is there a place uh -huh. that you feel people shouldn't be in there taking photographs, really? Yeah, they shouldn't be Auschwitz. In investigating. Auschwitz. When I went there, thank you. Uh, be because I do have um, a Jewish background, and and my great grandmother was in concentration camp, and as well as my grandmother and uh, my other side. So, I do think that that isn't a place that should be photographed. I think that that should be a place that people visit to remember, but should not be photographed. Do you feel that the people that go there from the paranormal? are being disrespectful because they do. There are people, I don't know if there are people who have gone in right inside Auschwitz and taken photographs, but do you feel that's disrespectful? In some ways, yes, because I think that it's important to remember what happened there, but it, to, as far as um, making it some paranormal journey or some notch on your belt as far as a paranormal experience, I believe is very irreverent. I would have to agree with you there. I was actually invited to Auschwitz, Auschwitz and I turned it down. Mm -hmm. 
just for the simple reason I don't think being an empath I could actually handle going to Auschwitz I don't think it's a place I'd, I would like to go near personally but that's for me certainly mm -hmm. wouldn't be taking photographs of the place um, now I mean when it comes to your experiences going around the world mm -hmm. you go around you're taking photographs you're doing mm -hmm. your photography that's correct. Do you feel um, sometimes when you've gone to a location that spirit's been there? Have you felt that or have you? Um, definitely. Uh, a number of places that I've been, I do experience uh, spiritual presences there. Um, uh, going into it in a logical sense i mean i guess people see things as cut and dry but it isn't completely that way for me it just isn't overly emotional if you follow yeah I can so yes that. yes i have seen them but i'm not overwrought by things and i don't allow my imagination to take over and my emotions to exasperate whatever might be experienced there do you find that, I mean, when you go to these places and you come across other people, do you try and kind of avoid the stories that go with these places? Um, uh, well, that depends on the situation because every person is different and it depends on the delivery. Yeah. Because a, a lot of times I don't want to hear a lot of emotional things because it's like, okay, that's kind of pointless because that's your emotional experience. Do you feel though it can sometimes be emotional going to places? It certainly can be emotional, but again, I'm the type of person that subdues every discordant passion within myself. Yeah. So you kind of put that at one side and focus on what you have to do at the task yeah, at all, hand. So it's all compartmentalized because that over emotionalism isn't going to aid in my investigation in any way. Yeah. So. If you could go anywhere, really, anywhere, anywhere, absolutely anywhere in the world, not in the UK, but anywhere that you haven't been yet, could you pick one place that you would absolutely go, I need to go there, I need to take my cameras um, and I need to see what's there? Um, absolutely. Um, I have often wanted uh to travel to asian countries which i haven't really had a whole lot of chance to do and uh there's like the suicide forest aokigahara yeah, yeah. I think japan so uh, um i would like to go there so that's one place that i would absolutely want to go yeah it'd be quite a creepy place to go though right it is Sad i mean i place. went to another Oh, yes, definitely, because thousands and thousands of people go there to commit suicide. Yeah. But I, I went to, like, the Romanian equivalent that has lots of paranormal and extraterrestrial activity called Hayabachu. Yeah. And, uh, and lots of people have heard about that, and I've seen different posts about it. And, of course, I yeah. really, a lot of the misinformation that goes into it is if anyone ever gets a chance and they are there, <laughs> just to go there <laughs> just go and see for yourself what it's all about <laughs> do you know something i was actually discussing that very forest today yesterday with somebody mm -hmm. we were talking about it's, that and we were saying we wanted to go there it is an incredible place um i the only thing that i would suggest is that you have somebody who's been there before so that you don't get lost yeah, uh, well, me being me, uh, I would get lost. <laughs> but well, I, I tried to get lost there, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I have to admit that while I was there, my experiences were um, they were kind of mixed. At some yeah. points, I thought that maybe I was sensing something, but then maybe not. But I do know that there were some disembodied voices and things like that that were very interesting. Well, I mean, it looks a very intense place. I'll put it that way. It looks a quite intense place. What is with the trees? 
See, that's the thing that they're not the way very the trees, good. One, the trees grow, why do they grow like that? One, one theory is, and why there's also an empty spot that's perfectly circle where bare yeah. of everything in the middle yeah. may have been evidence of of nuclear testing or bomb testing at one point, yeah. and that would explain why the trees are bent in such a way. Yeah, that is... Well, because that's definitely that. something I've seen in other places, like when I was in Russia and different places in France and things like that where multiple bombs were dropped and things, and uh, that can definitely, that radiation and things, that can definitely cause those trees to be shaped like that and those big bald spots that are round in the center for them to be like that as well so i've seen it in other places and added up that that could be that's one viable theory and of course ufologists want to believe that it's, i was just that going it's to say that. <laughs> that, it's, that it's a that it's a landing site for extraterrestrial crafts yeah um the, People who think that it may have been cleared out at one point by druids having, you know, the circle and yeah. that the druids may have done that. So there's multiple theories, but I know that uh, other than other than the possibility of it being a man-made thing, um, I do know that I did have some spiritual experiences there, like I said, with disembodied voices and having my hair pulled and, and things like that. Don't you find that that's actually goes with the territory? If you've got long hair, your hair's going to get pulled. <laughs> it, yes, it, it does. And my hair was my hair wasn't long at the time. I always and haven't always had long hair. I had yeah. short hair, and I was modeling. So a lot of the times, my hair was such a way where the photographer wanted it that way, or the designer. Yeah. So I didn't really get to choose the length of my hair at that time, but. That, <laughs> They were paying me pretty well, so. <laughs> it's all good then, isn't it? <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so from, well, your personal beliefs, I mean, in the paranormal, mm -hmm. um, um, how do you feel spirit around you mostly? Do you just sense well, them? Do you hear them? Do you feel them? I feel them. I see them. I hear them. Really? Oh, yeah. There's a, again, it's not really something I talk about a lot anymore because yeah. it is so popular and so trendy to have all of these wild stories about things that yeah. happen. Yeah. And it's really kind of deterred me really from talking about it too much. But yeah, I mean, see, feel, hear, um, and in multiple places. You know, pretty much most everywhere we step, there's something dead underneath us. So if that's all it takes for there to be a ghost, then, well, then there's ghosts everywhere. So it's not really, I don't think that it's really isolated to one area or another. Yeah, I can understand that. That's actually a very good point. Because there's history you know. everywhere, isn't there? Mm-hmm. I mean, and I mean... Oh, sure. Most of the humus layer in the ground is caused by dead things deteriorating in there. So, you know, they, we're walking on dead things everywhere we go. And so, But does every single thing have a spirit? I And sometimes I've often wondered, and this is, well, this came yeah. to me a number of years back while I was doing my own investigation, was that Maybe the places where I was at, where these supposed spirits came from, didn't actually come from play, uh, entities on this world, per se, yeah. but rather be some type of parallel universe, and that was some kind of a rift in there that allowed these things to cross over back and forth. See, I have this <laughs> this belief that we have our world, and then we have the spirit world, and they're both parallel. We can, they, we're can running yeah. together all the time, if you know what I mean. Absolutely. I, I, do, I do know, kind of like a mirror world, that's like a, a flip side to this, maybe. Yeah. Or some kind of parallel dimension that has opposites or, or maybe similarities or something. Yeah. So, when you travel around the world, I mean, you travel mm -hmm. a lot, don't you? 
uh, usually around eight months out of the year. Wow. That's a long time away from home. <laughs> Traveling well, around I, and around and around. <laughs> Living I am in a home. <laughs> yeah, well, wherever I am, I'm home. I bring it with me. So, um, And, yeah, a lot of those instances, it's like, you know, because of what I'm doing and nature of what I do, I'm very isolatory. So... Yeah. Most of what I do is in, involving a history that no longer, quote, exists right yeah. now. So, uh, yeah, I spend a lot, a lot of time alone. <laughs> Another thing, going to a more spiritual side of things. I mean, you mm-hmm. do put up some pretty amazing videos. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um... There are some videos on there. I don't really point them out. I would like for people to happily find them themselves, but because of the show, I'll, I'll relay this, that uh, there are uh, disembodied voices in some of my videos, and they come right after I mention something. So if people want to dig and they want to get interested in that, they can look and find them for themselves, because that's better. <laughs> <laughs> so you just like to put the footage up and let them find it? Yes, instead of instead of taking a spoon or say a lens and putting the sun directly into it and causing some type of <laughs> mirage, you know, for people to and being like, look, there it is, and put in these pictures with circles around people things where you're like, okay, uh, what exactly am I looking for here? You know, being it being it that they're that obvious, if people are paying attention and they see absolutely nobody else is around, that this other voice that obviously yeah. isn't a baritone, is a <laughs> female voice, is obviously coming from somewhere. Yeah. So in those instances, basically, I've only had two other people point those things out, and I'm like, "You get a cookie." <laughs> <laughs> you get a cookie. Good for you. Bravo. Way to way to actually pay attention. And this was a, a, a historical place out here, incidentally. Um, yeah. That's called Conrad Mansion. Yeah. And I was out there talking about an experience I'd had one night about a, a woman out in the yard. And yeah. uh, while I while I was talking and talking about it right there, I was like, incidentally, one night when I was here. I saw a woman here and right behind, right as I said that, I couldn't hear it, but it was in the playback. There was a very clear woman's voice that says, I'm here now. Wow. So so actual response to what I said. That's really cool when that happens, though. Yeah, and only two other people have pointed that out. Ah, Ness is asking in the chat room, are you coming back to the UK? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> with bells on <laughs> um you know of course of course at some point i mean i've i've been planning off and on over the years to go back there because it just holds a magical place in my heart it isn't because i feel some some i guess you would say connection because i think that i should be there because my family lineage is from there or anything yeah. like that it's just this place because I'm, I'm half Sicilian and half Russian, and I don't feel any connection to either of those countries. <laughs> <laughs> That's simply <kinda> because, <laughs> simply because my genetics came from those places. <laughs> but I, 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 feel, I feel really connected to the UK. So yeah, at some point I will definitely, definitely go back there. <laughs> Now, you say you don't feel any connection. Is that spiritually? Spiritually, yeah, you I don't... don't... I, I, I haven't built it up to some kind of an heirloom thing within myself that I belong there because my ancestors were there or something. There is nothing inside of me that says, look, Edward, this is where you need to be. I mean, from a spiritual point of view, mm-hmm. I don't come from Pendle Hill. I've got right. a connection to Pendle Hill, but when sure. I'm at Pendle Hill, I don't want to leave. <laughs> there you go. Well, see, when I was in Italy and Russia, other than uh, I really like the architecture, the monasteries and churches yeah. and things that I found there, and, and different um, 
catacombs and ossuaries and things like that because sicily has got some really good ossuaries that people have probably seen where they have the little alcoves and uh, old monks that were there before or posed in their robes still their habits and yeah. uh and their bones and uh you know the different churches and and, and such in, in russia i mean they're very beautiful and ornate those orthodox churches and monasteries which because I was a man, luckily I, I I feel blessed because of that for this for this reason that I got to go into places in the monasteries that women weren't allowed to go into. Would you given the chance? Mm -hmm. This is me assuming you haven't had the chance and haven't done it. But say mm -hmm. you were given the chance to go and photograph inside the Parisian catacombs, would you do that? I already have. <laughs> See, that was me assuming. <laughs> but um, but yeah, of course, when I went there, I had to do. I didn't really like Paris. Sorry, people. Okay. <laughs> I did not like Paris. Um, uh, I just the personalities of the French and myself just didn't didn't go together very well. I think I thought that they were very arrogant mm -hmm. and uh, very snobbish. So, I mean, when I was there, I did get to see the Eiffel Tower, and I saw the outside of the Louvre, and I was like, okay, I already, I already have the lowdown on the Mona Lisa, which is the one yeah. thing that I wanted to see, and that it's very tiny. So it was like, <laughs> you know, and everybody thinks they're going to see this huge picture, and I was like, well, fuck, I don't want to go in there. I mean, <laughs> <darn> it. <laughs> it's so I don't want to go in there. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. <laughs> so as much like, as it's bless it, we'll just beep it out. <laughs> yeah, bless it. Bless it. Um, but yeah, so I didn't want to go in there and be disappointed with this little picture, which I can appreciate in the photograph. And I was outside there, so I was like, oh, I'm as close as I've ever been to all of this beautiful art, and including th hundreds of thousands of pieces of art that they don't even display. But yeah. that felt really cool to be that close. But as far as my catacombs experience, it was neat. Um, it, it reminds me of the artwork because the, a lot of the bones were posed and how tightly and, and ornately and very precisely they were stacked up together to create these mosaics. Um, yeah. Reminds me of, of the church in, in uh, the Czech that I had went to, the Chapel of Bones. Of course, people see that too, and I had been there. Yeah. So... Yeah, just those things. I mean, I like to I like to explore the macabre places as well. And again, those are places that I wasn't having an overly emotional response from. I was just like, wow, this is really kind of trippy being in here. <laughs> well, I think I do have officially have to say, Edward, I'm jealous. Oh, don't be jealous of me. Oh, seriously, prison catacombs is the one place I've always wanted to go. <laughs> yeah, I think because of the scale of how huge they were, it was a little overwhelming. Yeah. Um, and I mean, people have got lost down there. There's rumors of people that live down there, cults of people that live down there. There's all kinds of wives' tales and folklore and different things. Yeah. And so just the possibility that that could be true. I know that that's true in New York to bring it back over here to the United States is that yeah. in New York, there's 500 miles of tunnels underneath the city. Really? And yes, there is. And only about a hundred of them are used. There is actually whole cities that are built under their cobbler shop, banks, everything, but are not used. And that was in case, the World War ha had come over here and everything got blown up. We could go underground and they were bunkers and stuff like that. And there are wow. people that... There are still people that live down there. Wow, I need to go to New York. Uh, yeah, you don't want to go to those places. Oh, do you know unless what? You just... You have, <laughs> unless you have a couple of good guides with you. Because that, those are places that you are definitely going to be in danger of people being down there that don't want you to be down there. Well, you can understand that, can't you? If they've made a well, life down there. Absolutely, and they don't want to be found. Well, that's, oh. that's, yeah. Okay, we'll go to New York for the normal places. So, 
Right. <laughs> haunted places, <laughs> normal haunted places above ground in New York. Uh-huh. Where would you suggest people go to? Um, if you could direct people to, well, I have videos on my page as well. Um, yeah. There's too many. To, there's too many to count, and there's actually a waiver in real estate things in New York that it has to be written in the paperwork that it's not haunted. Really. <laughs> If that tells you the level of how many hauntings are going on in New York, and that is for real, or at least it used to be in the laws. Um, a really good place that is on my page, so come to my page for the people who are listening. Um, I have videos of there, and it's from uh, Kings Park Sanitarium. Yeah. It's in Smithtown, Long Island. And uh, it is, it's basically the size of a small city, this whole compound that used to be a mental hospital. And they housed everybody in there, the criminally insane, everything there. So they have this huge compound, and there are pictures on my uh, site, and I have video on there as well. I did explore that place, and uh, when one of the buildings that I went in was 13 floors, and I walked every inch of those 13 floors by myself. And uh, that place was neat. I got to tell you that... I didn't have the experience that I thought I would. And that's not to say it was a bad thing because a lot of, a lot of what I experienced there was maybe more playful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because because over, over the years, I mean, people have died in there that weren't in any distress. You follow the doctors and things like that. So there are different, aspects it isn't just the focusing on the suffering that happened there follow yeah so yeah. but yeah smithtown king's park sanitarium you guys can look up online or on my page and you can see all of those things and uh but yeah it, i mean it's worth having a look into yourself definitely so you guys can read about the history and you can see different aspects of it that i didn't necessarily photograph or film Here's the thing, though. I've got this thing when I go, if I'm going to a location, mm-hmm. I'd rather not know about it. Do you right. know what I mean? I don't want to know too much of the history because I don't want mm-hmm. things put in my head before I get there. Absolutely, and I I prefer that as well. I mean, Kings Park in New York is absolutely a famous place, so pretty much yeah. everybody knows about the history of this place. Yeah. But as far as when you go in there, there isn't a map of the place with a detailed description of what's going on in the building. Yeah. And there were people saying they had went into this building and they went into the morgue part. And I was like, huh? There's no morgue in there. That was the housing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the morgue, morgue wasn't in that building. They served food and people slept and showered in there. <laughs> So people were getting all mixed up. <laughs> oh, people were getting their their uh, cues all mixed up. And that's why it is important to do the history on the place so you know what part of the building you're in so that you not, aren't tainting your own idea of the, your experiences that are going on. The history of the place I can go with, the paranormal experiences in the place I don't want to know about. I don't want no. names, I don't want dates, I don't want any of that stuff. The history I can go with, though. Right, exactly. And, yeah, that's something that, as far as when I say I don't want the details, and it's, and it's those things, I don't want the paranormal details. Yeah. You prefer to just go ahead and really find wanna, it yourself. Right. I don't want to, like, set myself up for a certain type of experience. Yeah. And it's funny how I've, I've seen this often, and this is another reason why I go alone. Um, is because these pe- people don't choose to see all sides of what's going on in there. They just follow this sad thing. And it's like, why are you sad? You're walking through a historical place that has also had a lot of wonderful things happen. But choosing to focus on the malignant part of those things is really damning to the whole experience. Yeah. So talking about the paranormal and... Well, Mm -hmm. I suppose the paranormal community. Do you feel Mm -hmm. like there's places that are overhyped and over-advertised, over-sold? 
Yes. Overpriced. Yes. One, of the, <laughs> one of those things that that happened to me on is the, on the sister ship to the Titanic when I was on the Queen Mary, that's moored in in Long Beach, California. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I lived out in Los Angeles for a couple of years, so I did have a chance to go there. And while I, while I did have awesome, I actually had more pictures of paranormal things that happened there, but we're not talking about little pin specks with something that was matrixed into a face because our brain is yeah. tuned to turn things into face and things that are recognizable to us. Yeah. Um, a whole apparition of a woman standing on the ceiling without any question of what it is, a full body apparition. Yeah. Okay. We're not like little specks or something that could be. It was very clearly this person. And um, then I went to, di I, because I befriended the security guard. I was actually <laughs> renting room on the ship on the B deck that night. It was B-15. Okay. And uh, I befriended a security guard and talked him into taking me to every part of the ship, which he <laughs> did. And so I got to see the famous pool and everything like this and it was all during the middle of the night uh when nobody was moving around and uh then we got to a part of the ship where in the california fashion it's just <coughs> up like a spook house, you know very theatrical and spook house and the you know the nylon material hanging on the walls like cobwebs and yeah player piano that uh is supposedly haunted but plays itself and things like yeah. that so very theatrical. So, I mean, even though I did see all of those other things, I was still like, uh, you had to commercialize this, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> right. Going to your photography site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right. You ready for this, Edward? I'm not going to be a popular bunny after this. Okay, sure. Go. Right. You know those people who send in pictures? Mm -hmm. And they're full of lots and lots and lots of orbs. Mm -hmm. You know, like, there's 200 orbs in one picture? Yes. Yes, which is probably dust or moisture or something else. Uh, a lot of, coming from a, a lot professional of point of view, can you explain that? <laughs> a abs absolutely, I can explain that. I have noticed that um, I'm not going to say anything bad about these people's pictures because they no, are no, very no, neat no, to look no. at and what it's okay but it's and and as far as seeing orbs with my own eyes that's a different experience that i will talk about afterwards so to answer mm -hmm. this if you notice a lot of those uh orbs and things like that that are going into things are after are not when somebody's been sitting there for a while they take these when they've gotten there and kick that dust up and it hasn't yeah. had a chance to settle yeah. Um, although it is a very neat effect, like this popular thing that people are doing with putting the sun directly into their camera and <laughs> take a picture of it, and the lens flare is coming in, you can yeah. create a similar experience for the people that are listening by taking um, a magnifying glass and allowing yeah. the sun to go through it and moving around and seeing how it changes those shapes. It's exactly what's happening on the inside of a lens in the camera. Yeah. So, right, I've got to be fair here. I believe that 99.99% of orbs can be explained away. Mm -hmm. But there is still 1% that can't. And I'm about to tell you about that. 1%, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> I'm about to tell you about that 1% because I wanted to reserve this until after I answered your question about the possibility of the dust and all of that. Yeah. I have... I have seen lights floating, round lights floating through the air. Um, one night, a friend of mine, Becky, and I were in Los Angeles, and we had went to this famous uh, cemetery called Hollywood Forever. And, uh, of course, you know, people recognize it because Tony Ramone is the, one of the Ramones band members is buried yeah, there. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. So, famous place. And uh, so anyways, we were there and we were by this mausoleum and I was looking at the ground seeing these little tiny child uh, markers. And uh, all of a sudden, out of the side of the building, a white light orb 
floated through the building up towards the front of the car through the windshield and straight into my chest. Yeah. Now, when I took when I took a picture of myself because I took a selfie to put on our like this is our haunted weekend thing kind of kind of yeah. flip book that we were you know yeah. um, there was a very clearly a man sitting in the back seat. Wow. So I believe that yes, that can't be explained away with matrixing by say a reflection in glass or something like that. Mm-hmm. It was straight behind me where nothing else was sitting in the back seat of the car over my shoulder and it was very clearly a full-size man's head so yes do i b- believe that orbs exist yeah absolutely i mean i mean if if i didn't have a body that would be a, a convenient way to travel by condensing myself into a ball <laughs> of light <laughs> you know <laughs> now here's the thing I just know my boss right now is going, oh my God, he believes in orbs. So, <laughs> because we have this argument all the time. She doesn't believe in orbs. Well, as far all. as the orbs I've seen in the pictures, a lot of them, <laughs> the, as a photographer, I can tell you that <laughs> as much as we want to believe that there's some spiritual entity there, and sometimes yeah. there is, nine times out of ten, it's dust. Yeah, or moisture. Moisture, dust. It, it, I mean, I've I have some really good pictures that I showed people because I wanted to show them the difference. Yeah. Is one night I was out in a cemetery in Long Island, and it wasn't very long ago, and it was raining, and I had my flash on my camera up to a very intense setting. Okay. And the shutter speed was absolutely fast. It was very fast shutter speed i can't remember exactly but anyways i put one of those pictures up there so that people could see it and all of a sudden they're like oh god i feel the spirits and all of this other thing and i was like okay and i let it keep going and i was like okay and they were asking me for my response and i'm like okay i'm gonna give more people the chance to comment on this and it was to prove a point okay so after all of this is said and done. The pictures that I was getting was of raindrops, yeah. 100% because it was raining outside, yeah. and I set it up this way on purpose. And so these emotional people that are like, oh, the emotions and this and that, and I was supposedly in a graveyard. <laughs> I didn't tell you this part. <laughs> I was supposedly in a graveyard, but it, it, it wasn't a graveyard. It was behind a house. <laughs> But that's that proves the whole point, doesn't it? Because people well, can't that see I, them and just jump to a conclusion. Right, exactly. So that's why I said that because I wanted to prove a point about how people respond, and thinking that it was a cemetery, but it was not. It was actually behind the house, and I knew one hundred percent that those that I had created in there was because of my flash and the raindrops. Right. So right. Let's look at this. You have mm-hmm. paranormal investigators. They're going yes. out, they're taking the cameras. Mm-hmm. You know they're going to be taking photos. What's the best mm-hmm. advice you could give them? The best advice that I can give to people before you start photographing is actually to use a very intense light, like a mag light, something that you can change the intensity of the light on. Well, that used to be the thing. I guess they have these anyways. Use yeah. a very intense flashlight. And what mm-hmm. you do is you put the flashlight onto the ground, yeah. pointed straight up at the ceiling. And if you see stuff floating through that beam, you're going to be getting pictures of that dust when you turn your flash on and you take that picture. Yeah. Do they need to maybe let things settle in a room before they start taking pictures? Do they need to kind of sit there just quiet? Maybe yes. just sit there do an EVP session or something. Absolutely. Quietly. Well, and, and give more time in between your questions before they respond. And again, don't always assume that they're going to be speaking in, in English. <laughs> do you know what? That's my bugbear. People just fire a question out and then Two seconds later, they fire another question out. And then two seconds later, yes, yeah. 
And what I what I try and do with mine is normally when I first go into a room, if that's what I'm doing, I'm not just photographing. I'm actually looking for EVPs or things like that. Um, I will go into a room. I'll ask a series of questions. I'll leave my recorder going because it's good for four hours before it, it, it'll shut off, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, and just so I'll ask a set set of questions. And, of course, there'll be, even be a pause in between them. And then I'll be like, you know, speaking of this device. I'm not yeah. going to be here, but anything that you want to say, draw off of that energy. The red light, I say, speaking to the red light. Um, and uh, in different places, of course, it helps. This is just a side note. In different places, it does help. Like if you're in Germany, have somebody that speaks German and can ask them in German. <laughs> because sometimes maybe you're not going to get a response because they don't speak English. Yeah, but um, may, do you think maybe sometimes it'd be more respectful to try and speak in their language, just to learn a few sentences in their own language and it do can, it that yes. way, like Germany, Russia, whatever. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, the country of origin. Yeah, that would be kind of kind of like, okay, well, what are they saying? What am I supposed to do here? Yeah. Um, and then to get back to the question, um, as far as like with photographs, again, using a very powerful beam so that you can see even the most minute little dust particles in the air, which yeah. do reflect light. Um, look for those things with that. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you can't see them with a regular flashlight intensity, but you can only see them with the intensity light of the flash that's on the yeah. camera. Yeah. So the paranormal going forward, or the community, how do you see that? Um, the paranormal community, now we have to remember that a lot of these things are meant for our entertainment. So some of these situations I have seen and, and known about in my life where they created situations to keep their people riveted. Because as we know, being investigators ourselves, that not every time we go in some place, something is going to happen. Oh, no, I've been in places. Nothing's happened. <laughs> oh, yeah, I fall asleep sometimes Yeah. in these places. And they're like, you slept overnight in Waverly Hills. Well, I didn't mean to. I was sitting there waiting for something to happen and ended up falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it just sort of happens because every time we go there, they're, I mean, spirits aren't trained monkeys. They don't just jump through hoops because we put one up in the air for them to do that that is a very good point so be respectful mm -hmm. yes, if you're in a definitely. foreign country maybe try and learn a few phrases in their language do you think or, and or, i think uh, yeah absolutely i mean speak, speaking multiple languages i haven't went to a lot of countries where i don't speak the language um so Excuse me. Um, You're fine. Those uh, uh, places like that, I do think that it helps because, again, I mean, it, the, uh, some of those spirits are, again, are remembered, are tied to the, their experience as a human here, okay? So their language yeah. is going to be the language that was, that was um, you know, their vernacular. So ask them in their own language if you can. That is actually a really good point, it is. Because you tend to see um, shows where they don't do that, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yes, and I have seen that. And um, different things that just were like, wow, okay, that was pretty clever, and that's a really good way to keep people around. And one of my, one of my favorites, I'll say his name, but I've always thought he's amused me. Was Aaron Good Goodwin? Yeah, uh, I think I think that he's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> Zach Bag is, is is funny. I love watching him uh, be, because they amuse me and they have that ability to keep you wanting to watch it because they're clowns. <laughs> right, I've got to ask you this. Well, while you're here, um, mm -hmm. we have had this discussion a few times mm -hmm. on on the show. I've had a discussion quite a few times because I've had American guests on before. Right. <clears throat> is there a culture for demons in the USA? Is it that a cultural thing? I can tell you about the demon culture in, in America. 
I would love you to. From, <laughs> <laughs> from my experience in America that has to do with demons is that um, I don't want to get too much into the specifics of why, but yeah. I think that based on what I'm about to say, people will be able to draw their own conclusion on exactly what I meant. <laughs> oh. Okay, so, so the idea... Yeah. The idea that everything that's spiritual is evil. I think that that, I that, that. Uh, honestly is the root of a lot of the demonology that, that comes from here. Because it really has been a place where it was ruled by fear based on the church. I'm going to say it. The church. Um very uh, fire and brimstone revelations kind of stuff where it rules their followers through fear. So they have been inadvertently over the years indoctrinated with the idea that everything that happens on a spiritual level, other than in their church, of course, mm -hmm. um, is demonic. And I think that Oh, there are different authors, and again, I won't mention any names because I don't want to really sling mud on anybody in particular, but there are different writers over the years who have given a skewed idea of things, and so the people that do follow that type of stuff here and delve into it based on the American idea, um, they... they I think that they have an inaccurate idea of it. But, I mean, it's a growing culture here as people are becoming more um, interested in the spiritual, paranormal side of things. And But I'm always shied away because it's it seems to oftentimes go back to, oh, demonic, this is demonic, oh, I feel a <laughs> demonic presence. And I was like, okay. Let's go into what demons are. They would take time out of their day just to screw with your emotions. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> because, because it's like these people go in there and, and want a paranormal experience. And then when yeah. they have one, they, they say that it's evil, as you've probably noticed. In different things. Yeah. It's like, um... But then damning it, it's like, okay, why are you going in there with this mindset that everything's demonic? And then you seem surprised when something happens. I thought you were a believer. You shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> we actually have a question concerning the orbs thing in the chat room. Okay. From, okay, what's the name? From Ness, who is saying... Okay. All right. Ness is asking, but what if you see one on CCTV and it's changing shape? Well, that would be different if you um, CCTV or whatever kind of TV. If you see something and it mutates into something that can't, that isn't. Remember, we cannot help this part of ourselves that our mind matrixes things, and we turn yeah. them into that can be recognizable to our own mind, and that is something that we cannot help. Yeah. Okay. But as far as something mutating in front of your eyes, there are a, diff a lot of different shadow anomalies. I'll go into this so yeah. you don't have to ask, Kaz. Um, <laughs> shadow anomalies. <laughs> because I, I really, I really kind of like this. And I like it even more when I'm able to recreate these instances. And that isn't to say that all of them are not, uh, are, are either explainable or unexplainable, you yeah. follow? Okay, so seeing something mutate in front of uh, a CCTV. Now, there are different light sources that come from outside of different places, cars driving by, airplanes. Yeah. And we've got to understand that those, that light can travel a very long distance. And as you've probably seen around the lens and those cameras, there's a cowl. And that catches that light underneath there. And so yeah. some of that can be explained away by that. But as far as seeing a body take shape, which I have on closed caption television before, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I've seen that happen while I was holding my camera in front of me because they use our electronic devices at times to be able to manifest themselves. Yeah. Um, 
being able to look through it, not be able to see it with our eyes, because remember, our eyes cannot see but only a certain finite amount of different types of light. So yeah. our camera is able to pick up on that because it has a broader spectrum of things that it can see. But seeing things even like that, which is a similar experience, to see those things manifest through my screen. So I'm looking through the screen on my camera mm -hmm. and uh, I'm seeing things take shape in, in front of me. I think personally that, the, that they perhaps are uh, different, quote, shadow spirits, as people have called them, shadow people. Yeah. Uh, and they are taking shape. Definitely. I mean, there's so many different ways. There's infinite ways because they're not restricted by their physical bodies to manifest themselves. So there's more ways than we really have a, a idea of how they, they're able to manifest. But I definitely think that some of those are paranormal nature. Sure. Good question. That was a good question, wasn't it? <laughs> mm. Yeah, I appreciate that one. And that one definitely hits home with me because I've seen that stuff a lot of times happening, mm -hmm. but, but manifesting, unlike orbs, which can easily be explained. And sometimes with different forms of light and things like that, that, some of those things can be explained as well. But seeing it manifest itself while looking through the viewfinder on my camera, mm -hmm. that, I mean, there, there's more to that. So what do you do in that kind of situation then? What would you do personally? Keep watching. Keep what? <laughs> keep taking photos. <laughs> uh, well, I, defi I definitely would keep filming. I mean, if you see things like that, it seems like a lot of people get kind of a knee-jerk uh, reaction to scream and run off and carry on. Yeah. And it's like, uh, that's not the thing to do in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to keep on keeping yeah. on. <laughs> Don't panic. This is why you came there. <laughs> you know what? I mean, this is exactly what you wanted. So be be careful what you ask for, because <laughs> when you get it, you should be prepared and make sure that that is really what you want. Um, so, <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, as far as emotional responses for me, what I do get is I get excited. I'm like, oh, good, here it comes, you know. But I don't voice that. I, I, I make sure that when I get to that point and there is something that I talk to it and I talk to it as if I'm talking to you now. Yeah. Um, it, it isn't some kind of, uh, of rehearsed way that you got to talk to them. You just talk to them as if they're just another thing there. Like, hello. <laughs> just another person. You? Hello. How are you? So how's the weather today? <laughs> You, you know, because if they are a, a I don't being, think asking them how the weather is is going to work, Edward. Well, you know, just that type of thing. You know, <laughs> ask, ask them mundane questions. What do you think of my shirt? You know, things <laughs> like that to ascertain whether or not they are actually that, per, that definitive one is actually like not one of those ones which I've seen before who are just kind of like on a recording. They just yeah. keep going over. We're doing exactly the same thing, but that they're actually capable of thought so they can answer you based on something that has to do with now. Okay. Yeah. So that, and those things are the kind of questions that I ask that have to do with present that make them focus on me. Can you see me? Yes. Okay, good. What am I wearing? What do you think of my shirt? And sometimes, you know, things like that, or what am I holding on to? That's another thing. I'll put something in my hand, the coin. Um, yeah. I've used different artifacts before, little religious artifacts. It really doesn't matter to me what religious artifact because, you know, I've, I've used different ones over the years, mm -hmm. scapulars, things like that. What is this that I'm holding in my hand? And uh, <laughs> It's a light. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good it's a light. <laughs> We're having a spiritual experience here. You're Do I get a cookie? Because... <laughs> so you get a a <laughs> uh, because you can see me that's no fair there but i can assure <laughs> everybody i have a face that was made for radio <laughs> <laughs> he had to get that in there <laughs> i had to throw that one in there I, I had to, yeah i got a face that was made for radio so don't get excited 
So do I. Why do you think I'm on here? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so back to what we were saying. So oh, let me let me we ask saying. you a question. Let me ask you a question first. Okay. Okay. Frankie's so turning the, the tables. I'm turning the tables on you, lady. Um, so as far as as far as you you've heard my thought on the the whole CCTV thing and that. I yeah. mean, what are your thoughts on that? And what have, have what if any experiences have you had with that? Um, CCTV, I think, can be useful. I think it should be used. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. if you're using it, and basically people set up CCTV, they let it run the whole night. Mm-hmm. Don't edit it. Put it up the way it is. It doesn't matter if there's eight hours. Just put up the whole eight hours or 10 hours, or 12 hours, or whatever. There you go. Don't edit it out. Don't edit, Don't mess with it at all. Just put it up the way it is. There that's you go. I think the CCTV. I, I, agree, I agree with that, because that's really what it is. And I mean, if somebody wants to do an investig... Put in the time, sit in front of that monitor and watch that. Um, I... I have been a part of some other spoofs and things like that where they'll set up things like that and they're hashing <laughs> and at time and, you know, fishing line and different things to move chairs and fun stuff, you know, just to be like, OK, is there a possibility of being able to recreate this with as much effic- efficacy mm-hmm. as uh, they have in other places, you know, because yeah. I don't necessarily automatically believe that everything I see is a ghost. You follow even things that I see for I try and see it from both sides to prove it as well yeah. as this at the same time so that there's that duality there. OK, um, have you heard of a house called 30 East Drive, the Black Monk House? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, I spent three I days have... in there. I spent three you days did. in there last year. Wow. Yeah, Tell but me we about... can't. We kept hearing this tap, tap, tapping coming from upstairs when everyone was downstairs. But it was mm-hmm. only around the window frame in the living room. Mm-hmm. And what we found is pressure was being put on the floorboards upstairs. When somebody, If somebody did go upstairs and went into the parents' bedroom, it put pressure mm-hmm. and you got a tap, tap, tapping noise. It took us an hour to figure it out, but we went around the whole house trying to figure out what was causing the tapping noise. The Victorian house that, that I lived in was kind of like that too. Hardwood floors and radiators. Yeah. You know. Radiators. And you have those hot water pipes traveling through the floors and things, heating yeah. and and unheating, and you get a uh, thermal expansion. And the floor they they talk to you at night. Anybody who's ever lived in a house with hardwood floors knows that they talk at night. Oh yeah, they do. Uh, oh yeah. Absolutely. They do. And there's a difference between tap, tap, tap and thump, 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 where there's absolutely, 100%, unequivocally, no actual way the thermal expansion is going to sound like a 200-pound man is stomping down the stairs. That is very true. (laughs) That is very, very true. (laughs) So, I mean, every tap, tap, tap. uh, Go look and see where it's coming from. Absolutely. I would look and see where it's coming from. And uh, I guess I guess what helps me in my investigations is I don't always assume that everything is paranormal, although some of them are. Yeah, you have to look for other explanations. Mm-hmm. It really is that simple. Instead of being like, oh, it is, it 100% is, and you see people getting so adamant, and it's like, hey, that's a beautiful picture of a beautiful house, and you should be proud of that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's paranormal. That is very true. Well, do you know what, Edward? Mm. We have actually been talking away for over an hour. Uh, We have, haven't we? We have. (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) I'm going to have to wrap this up, unfortunately. But, at some point, would you come back on? Absolutely. I would love to come back on. And, of course, thank you so much, Kaz, for asking me. I was terribly flattered, and it, of course, I have to share this with the listeners that Chaos was it, it was just thinking that I was going to be like, yeah, right. Yeah, I <laughs> and did I was actually just, think that. And I was absolutely <laughs> flattered and, uh, you know, very, very much flattered and 
very willing to do this because you know what I mean this is this is in the realm of things that I really like so I was like absolutely <laughs> let's do this stuff <laughs> yeah so you've got to you get again this stuff for, out there and, <laughs> yeah, well thank you again for having me on the show thank you so much so all I need to say now is please remember oh I need to remember we have a competition running Mr. Ashley Nipps has very kindly donated the Paranormal Investigators Journal for someone oh, to really? win. I actually have two of these. They are fantastic books to have. You can put down your data, you can put down times, you can put, there's experiments in there, there's everything in there. They're absolutely fantastic. Wonderful. All Wonderful. you need to do to win this is be mm-hmm. A, a member of Parasearch Radio group page, mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. comment, and you're put in the draw. That simple. And trust me, you that want to have one of these books. They are absolutely amazing. Mines are going well, with me on like location. It. So I'm already kind of jealous because I'm not going to get one, I bet. Uh, we'll see if Santa Claus can bring you one, Edward. Right. Oh, yay. <laughs> yay. Oh, yay. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, everyone, please remember you can find Parasite Radio on the World Wide Web. You can find us on Twitter, you can find us on Instagram, you can find us on Podbean, you can find us on SoundCloud, you can find us on YouTube. You have no reason to miss a show. And honest this has been the be- this has been such a good show. Thank you, Edward. <laughs> hey, thank you so much, Kaz. Anytime <laughs> you are ready to do this, I am ready. Fantastic. I'm gonna hold you to that now. <laughs> all right and also one last message for everybody listening make sure yeah. you come to my page yes watch we'll my videos page. look at my photography smash that love button watch <laughs> my videos you will get to see that i do definitely in fact have a face that's made for radio uh, he keeps saying this <laughs> he keeps saying this never going to agree but with anyways, it but he keeps saying it but anyway. I, I, I promise you will love the videos. You will have all kinds of my antics. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. I'm Shenanigans. a shenanigans. All right. Thank you guys for coming, and I will talk to you later. Talk to you later, Kaz. Right. Stay there a second. Right. Yep. Good night, guys. Say good night. Edward, say good night. Thank good you for night. listening. Sweet Don't forget dreams. to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.